What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, I have a story that went unnoticed, but we're going to shed some light on the situation. If you're new to the channel, we talk about all things lockup related. We can get pretty funny and we can get pretty damn serious. And speaking of serious, don't ask me about Bobby. Me and him ain't on good terms right now. My kids came down here this morning. They seen all kinds of G-strings and cash on the pool table. I was like, Bobby, what'd you do last night? He said it wasn't him. Who the hell else is going to leave G-strings and 50s on the pool table, Bobby? He tried blaming Brittany. Really? Come on now. So we ain't on good terms. But that's besides the point. I'm sure a lot of y'all don't even know who Bobby is. It is a prison warden's worst nightmare. Inmates who take over the prison. The 8 News Now I-Team is uncovering disturbing details about what the state doesn't want you to know. The I-Team's Vanessa Murphy is shedding light on what appears to be a cover-up. A cover-up? I don't know about y'all, but the only thing that I see that appears to be anything is that damn avatar grip he's got on that pad. What is that, Inmates at Medium Security Prison Southern Desert Correctional Center caused a riot on December 8th. Later that day, the State Department of Corrections issued this press release called Nevada, calling it a disturbance. Every officer who saw that was like, this is the biggest slap in the face I've ever seen in my life. Paul Lundquist is the president of a union which represents correctional officers. It, this was beyond a bad situation for slap in the face what was a slap in the face what i gathered from this and i could be mistaken is that these correctional officers want to be known for this shit that they had to put up with they're stealing their glory by saying it was just a damn funky disturbance see it doesn't matter if you're a correctional officer or an inmate people feel as though they deserve recognition and glory for living through crazy situations Five months, the 8 News Now I team has been digging to uncover what really happened. Just now, we received this statement. The DOC and the Attorney General's office are investigating officer conduct and offender behavior during a disturbance that day. Here's what we learned. Inmates unlocked their own cells from the inside, refused orders, covered surveillance cameras, flooded the area with water, and took control of an entire prison unit. They used a metal bunk bed frame to block an entrance. When officers busted in and lined up in a formation, the inmates mimicked them with their own oh. formation. Some of them Shit. armed with prison-made weapons like shanks, threatening to kill staff. Imagine being a CO, you're lining the hell up, that's protocol, and then you see the damn inmates do the same thing. I think that technique would probably go out the window if they're all lined up as well, but that was a good animation of it too. You see the water start rolling in with a little bit of blue. And you know, I don't know anything about these riot techniques that these inmates are doing, how they line up just like the COs, but I'm sure if they're doing it like this, it's for good reason. They've learned different tactics just like the correctional officers do. Let's speak a little bit about how the inmates just happen to open up their doors. There's a lot of old jails and prisons out there where there's techniques to keep your cell door unlocked. I've been in a few cell blocks where people knew how to mess with the locking mechanism to where it registers as is locked on the booth, but it's swinging wide open during the night. <laughs> So this happens, and I do believe I've read multiple stories about guards being attacked because the cell doors are not locking in this state. I'm not sure, though. It might have been like uh, New Mexico or Nevada or something like that. You don't maintain the prison. You don't keep up with the locks. Shit like this is going to happen, man. Some of them armed with prison-made weapons like shanks threatening to kill staff. The ringleader, a known member of the white supremacist Aryan warrior gang. Every single person that I talked to expressed the same thing. I didn't know if I was going home to my family that night. I didn't know if, if we were all going to make it out alive. The I-team has learned tasers were used along with pepper balls, flashbangs, and grenades with spray to make it difficult for the inmates to see. Officers report having trouble breathing because of the smoke from fires the inmates had set and pepper spray. Lundquist says they didn't have the resources they needed. They should be getting commendations, not investigations. They should be getting commendations, not investigations. Well, look, unfortunately, you're working in a fucking state penitentiary. Who the hell are you when it comes to a $20 million lawsuit? But like I said, the, these correctional officers, they want their accommodations. They want to be known for putting in their damn work. Just like all these other famous riots that you see on the news and tabloids. Do we still use tabloids nowadays? 
investigations. The I-team has learned there was a scramble for officers to respond. They were called over from High Desert State Prison. An employee was even called in during a sick day. The Clark County Fire Department, Metro Police and other departments were on standby. And while publicly the DOC claims 20 to 25 inmates were responsible for what happened, the I-team has learned internally at least 40 are considered to be direct participants, and the department had planned to move more than 100 to other institutions. While the That's typical after a riot, especially, you know, when they figure out what organization had to do with it. They don't want it happening again. They don't want the same people gathering up, plotting and planning. So they find out who was involved and they send them to different prisons all over the state. Lockdown 23 and 1 status probably for the next two years, maybe longer. But... When I speak in the past about how cell blocks can flip or prisons can flip within an instant, this is what I'm speaking about. You know, two organizations could go at it or they could start a riot. Next thing you know, they're all getting shipped and whatever gangs left over in the prison, they're going to be running it. DOC claims minor injuries were treated on site. The I-team has learned an officer was hit in the head with a rock and at least one inmate needed to go to the hospital. This is why it wasn't known, man. Nowadays, just a couple rocks on the head ain't gonna make the news lines. And finally, the DOC also claims the disturbance happened around 1 p.m., but the I-team has uncovered trouble began five to six hours earlier. They really don't want anyone to know what's going on out there. They don't want anyone to know how badly they're failing. The accountability is zero for administration. We've repeatedly requested interviews with prison leadership. The department continues to decline our requests. We also reached out to the governor and a spokeswoman says he doesn't have anything to add other than what the DOC told us. And by the way, there is video of what happened. We requested it along with documents about the riot. The DOC has refused to provide it. You ain't getting that. Go ahead and move on to your next story. Which homeowner shot at him? I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually. Whoever oh. that was, you're not in trouble. Come see us. We have a gun safety class we put on every other Saturday. But my objective here nowadays is for y'all to leave here with a smile on your face. So with that being said, let's jump right into the last clip of the day. So he just got mace as training ah, technique. Grab the baton, grab the baton. Grab the baton, grab the baton man, grab it. Where the fuck is the baton? <laughs> Calm down, man. Relax. Get back. Get back. Right here, right here to me, to me, to me, to me, to me. Right here, right here, right here. One eye open. Got to pry it open. Get it open. Come on. Bang, bang. Good, ho. Brain open, motherfucker. Bang, bang. Oh, uh, listen to the guy chuckle in the background when he says, just grab the baton. 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 Where the fuck is the baton? Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you enjoyed the last clip of the day. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new, hit the subscribe. Until the next time, I salute to every last one you've been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the lockdown compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.